Ariel Hawani in New York City, just days away now from UFC Brooklyn, alongside Yancey Medeiros, who meets Gregor Gillespie Saturday night in Brooklyn, New York, at the Barclays Center. Yancey, it's good to see you. It has been a while, almost a year. Where have you been, my man? Training in the jungle. <laughs> That's it. You just took time off? No, I've been training ever since my injury. You know, after my rib injury, just came back, adjusted, got scientific. From training in the streets, I went to training in the jungle, swinging from branch to branch. I'm on gorilla shit. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Now, rib injuries, I've never suffered one myself, but I'm told that they are incredibly painful. Laughing, sneezing, coughing. How long did it take for you to get over the injury? Uh, about two months. Wow. About two months. So. Didn't do anything? No, I could train, but I fully train and get back into the gist of everything. Yeah, it took about a good two months to fully recover. So July, September, I was ready to go. How much did you miss all of this? Because like I said, it's been almost a year since you last fought against Cowboy. I've been ready since yesterday. Yeah. I woke up at 160 this morning. Wow. I ain't got no cut, bro. I'm fasting and weighing my weight. Wow. Is this one of the best cuts of your career? No cut. Yeah, I walk around at 160. There ain't no cut now. Wow. Like I said, I'm ready. January 19th, I'm coming. Now, Gregor Gillespie is no slouch. They're not, they're not giving you a tune-up fight, so to speak, to get back on track. Are you impressed with him and how much you know of him and what he's done in MMA thus far? Oh, I've been studying. I've been collecting my data. I, I got scientific over this last year. Okay. You know, before you've seen, you seen a hungry, happy Hawaiian. Now you're seeing a smart, happy Hawaiian. Okay, okay. Yeah. When you mean, like when you say scientific, what do you mean by that? Everything from my nutrition, just everything, collecting data, taking o being overwhelmed with things and just and just making it a challenge you know what a science when a scientist looks at a problem he looks at it he analyzes it he collects data he makes his adjustment and he finds a solution okay wow so this is part of the the maturation of Yancey Medeiros earlier in your career you were not doing these things uh, I mean before I kind of knew what not to do okay. and now I know what to do okay. And how did this happen? Like, where, where did the, the idea, the inspiration come from to start doing stuff like this? I just, I buckled down after my, I felt like, I felt like I got detoured my last two fights, okay. right? My last fight with, the, with Cerrone, yeah. getting the loss and then getting the injury yeah. really tested me, really put me in, a, really overwhelmed me emotionally, spiritually and physically. So I was like, oh, I need to buckle down if I really want to get to this. So the first name they gave me, I was like, yes. You know, I used to work around. I used to walk around at 195. Got scientific, trained in the jungle, got on my gorilla, became a gorilla, and I'm ready to represent Hawaii to the fullest. I like it. Something I always wanted to ask you about that Cerrone fight: Did you give him too much respect? Did you admire him too much? And was that not the real Yancey Medeiros because of the admiration that you had for Cerrone? Everybody takes takes a fight differently. You can get punched in the face. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of things that's going through your head, but. That's just me, man. I would have did that if I won the fight. Okay. You know what I mean? If it, that's just how it turned out. I knew the mistakes I made. I made these adjustments. I'm not, and I'm, I'm not making those mistakes in this, in this fight. What was it like for you to see Bellator put on two shows in Hawaii? Were you a little bit jealous? Oh, man, not jealous. Inspired. Inspired, man, and motivated. I mean, the support, that mana that they give us is just so unreal. And it's just, we gain nothing if UFC comes to Hawaii besides the fact that we want to give back to our people. You know, like, unfortunately, Hawaiians are a dying race, but our culture will always be perpetuated. And I think that when, the, when companies and UFCs come bring that down, it's just so inspiring for us. I didn't get jealous at all. I don't get bitter, I get better. First ESPN card as well, what does that mean for you? Representing Hawaii, building my brand. And you're also fighting alongside a fellow Hawaiian and Rachel Ostovich. And, you know, there's been also a lot of talk, her on the card, Greg Hardy on the card. How do you feel about Greg being on this card alongside Rachel? Hey, bro, everybody's here to represent themselves and they fight. They're, they're there for a reason. I don't focus on why they're there. I focus on why I'm here. Okay. Have you given her advice? You know, she hasn't been in a lot of big fights, had the spotlight. You have been. Have you talked to her about that? Do you have, do you, do you have a friendship with her? Oh, yeah, I have a great friendship with her. We're, we're real cordial. We, we collaborate. We even cross-train together. And it's just we make the best of it. And we, Hawaiian, we feed off each other. We feed off each other. We train. We collaborate. And, you know, she trains at a different gym. But like I said, we're Hawaiian and we come together. You got love. I got, I got Hana. I got Oha. 100. Can I ask you your prediction in the main event? Cejudo Dillashaw, who do you got? 
I got no prediction, but I, I always love seeing adversity. It's a great matchup. I like both of them. I like both of them and what they what they represent in the cage. So whenever whenever I see they're like, oh, what do you think about Robert Whitaker and and his fight? I'm like, that Gaston. I'm like, that's a good ass fight. I want to see. I want to see adversity. I want to see a fight. That's what I want to see. I want to see who has a champion mindset and just and just implement the game plan because I'm over here collecting data because I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. Should they keep the flyweights? What do you say? Keep it. I mean, everybody wants to fight, yeah. right? And it's just, why not? I mean, why, why are they going to deprive the um, those fighters from that weight class? They work just as hard as me to make my weight, to, to get on my weight, 155, 170. Everybody's got different different sizes, you know, and just... Represent, man. Don't take the don't take the late class, um, the weight class away. I mean, give it, give give people the opportunity they want to represent themselves and build their brand. Well done, Yancy. Welcome back, my man. Oh, yeah. Good luck on Saturday for you. Oh yeah, what do you got? Sure. Yancy's got a present. Okay. I don't know if his team is ready for the present. Watch out for the cord. We'll give you some play-by-play, -play. Yancy. Oh, he's got a a bag. Yeah. Wow. What do we have here, Yancy? Hawaiian host. Aloha. A bunch of aloha. For me? Of course, for you. You man. brought this for me? Yes, sir. You knew I was going to be here. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't, but I knew if you was here, I got you. <laughs> can we share this, or are you cutting weight right now? I'm good right now. Okay. That's all for you. My man, thank you so much. Aloha. Mahalo, aloha, good luck on Saturday. That's why you the man, bro. <laughs>